Question sixty one. When caring for a resident with an indwelling Foley catheter, it is important to a tuck the tubing under the patient's leg to keep it off the floor. B. Withhold fluids if the bag is too full. C. Pin the tubing to the resident gown. D. Check the bag and tubing frequently for adequate urinary flow. Answer D. Explanation. When a client has an indwelling Foley catheter, the nurse aide should check that the tubing is open so that the urine can flow from bladder. After each position change, when the client returns to the bed or chair after being up, ensure that the tubing is not kinked or closed. The bag should be lower than the bladder to prevent back flow. Question sixty-two: The recommended position for giving an enema is a semifowlers. B. Left Sims. C. Brown. D. Supine. Answer B. Explanation. The left Sims position is used for rectal examinations and administering enemas. The client lies on the left side with the right knee and hip bent. It is also called the lateral recumbent or semi-brown side position. Question sixty-three: The charge nurse has asked you to take Mrs. Shumway's vital signs. You know you must first a identify the patient and introduce yourself. B. Wash your hands. C. Gather appropriate equipment. D. All of the above. Answer D. Explanation. Before providing any care, the nurse aide must follow all the standard steps in preparation. All of the steps must be taken before proceeding, not just one. Gather everything needed so that you don't have to leave the client's room once you begin. Hand washing is always done before and after each client interaction. Knocking before entering the client's room, introducing yourself, identifying the client, and explaining what you will be doing are also part of standard practice. Question sixty-four: A professional and safe working appearance would include a sandals, t-shirt, and name tag. B. Clean, wrinkle-free uniform, short fingernails, off-the-shoulder hair. C. Carefully manicured, acidic nails. D. Jewelry that reflects your fun personality. Answer B. Explanation. The nurse aide is considered to be a healthcare professional and should dress accordingly. Each facility has a dress code policy regarding the type of uniform to wear. Clothing must be clean and free from stains, tears, or wrinkles. Shoes must be closed-toe with non-skid soles. Appropriate grooming is always necessary. Jewelry is usually limited to a watch and wedding ring to avoid injuring a client while giving care. A name tag is part of the standard uniform. Question sixty-five: Most of our calories should come from a fat, b carbohydrates, c protein, d vitamins. Answer B. Explanation: A balanced diet is essential for health. When nutrients are taken in the right combination of calories, the client's desired weight is maintained. Carbohydrates supply fuel for the body, so 55 to 65 percent of calories should come from carbohydrates. The energy is stored in the muscles and the liver for immediate for future use, as well as the, for the brain to function. Fat and protein have important roles, but are not good for energy sources. Question sixty-six: The patient complains that her hand hurts where the IV is running. The nurse assistant notices that the hand is puffy. The best thing to do is a notify the medication nurse that the patient is complaining of pain. B. Notify the IV nurse that the infusion appears to have infiltrated. C. Put ice onto the hand. D. Reassure the patient that needles always hurt. Answer B. Explanation. 
Infiltration happens when the ivy flute leaks into the tissue because of a dislodged or misplaced ivy catheter. The nurse assistant should monitor the ivy site and report if it becomes swollen, cold to the touch or painful. The skin near the ivy site may look pale. Always be careful when moving or assisting a client with an ivy to avoid pulling the line. Question 67. Continuing education is a important for keeping abreast of new development. B. A professional standard. C. Necessary for recertification in many states. D. All of the above. Answer D. Explanation. Learning for healthcare professionals does not end at graduation. Medicine is constantly changing, and it the responsibility of each person to be aware of new developments in the area of practice. Clinical standards in many states require proof of continuing education in order to renew a license or certification. During an accreditation survey, hospitals and facilities must show proof that staff members receive ongoing training in education. Question 68. The opening of the colostomy to the outside of the body is called the A. Rectum B. Insertion site C. Stoma D. None of the above Answer C. Explanation. Stoma is an artificial opening in the body done during surgery. For clients with a colostomy, the surgeon brings the end of the colon through the abdomen and creates a mouth-like opening that would drain waste into a bag. A stoma can also be done for the bladder, for the ileum, the lowest part of the small intestine. Question 69. Mrs. Sparks is an 83-year-old female patient who suffers from the late effects of a CVA. She has L-sided hemiplasia. This is a rush to the L-arm, B. L-arm contractor, C. Paralysis on the left side of the body, D. L-arm and leg itching. And to see explanation, a client with left-sided hemiplegia has paralysis on the left side of the body. The paralysis can be partial of raw, raw total. It occurs on the opposite side of the CVA, stroke or brain disorder. Mrs. Sparks had a CVA on the right side of her brain, resulting in left-sided paralysis. Question 70. Mrs. Hannah Dads had a heat replacement and is admitted to the long-term care facility for rehabilitation. Her condition is A. Obstetric B. Acute C. Chronic D. Tonic Answer B. Explanation An acute event is a new or sudden situation that is expected to resolve. Examples are a broken bone, a hot head cold, or the flu, or an asthma attack. In this question, Mrs. Hanadat has an acute condition because she will be leaving the long-term care facility after she witnesses rehabilitation. A chronic condition develops slowly and continues to progress. Examples are heart disease, diabetes, and osteoporosis. Thank you for watching.